Alex Kepler. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about peer adjustment across the transition to middle school, specifically as it relates to things such as peer victimization and problematic peer uh, behaviors across this transition. So as we know, this period is a time that's very tumultuous for a lot of different pre-adolescents. They experience a lot of peer victimization. It's pretty common across a wide range of um, different adolescents and pre-adolescents. Um, however, there is a lot of variability in how peer victimization affects people going forward, specifically, again, across this transition to middle school. So what we looked at here was how different uh, coping styles, specific coping styles with peer stress helped moderate, or not moderate this association, predict um, later peer adjustment across this transition. So specifically, we looked at conflict resolution, cognitive distancing, support seeking, and re revenge seeking coping strategies. So for conflict resolution, that would be something like going up to them and um, telling the kid to stop. Cognitive distancing would be mentally distancing yourself from the situation, so make believe nothing happened. Seeking support would be seeking support of a, a, a superior teacher, and seeking revenge would be getting some sort of revenge, either physical or relational, on the other child. We also measured peer victimization, peer acceptance, lonely, loneliness, and social dissatisfaction as outcome variables. Um, and what we found was that support seeking was associated with greater teacher-reported victimization and lower teacher-reported peer acceptance across this transition, whereas revenge seeking was associated with greater child-reported uh, peer problems. And I don't have enough time to explain the moderation. 